Hi, good evening. I'd like to welcome you to Poem Praise 2. And peace and blessings be upon you and your family this evening. Now we are going to get right back into I Am Harriet. Right now we're on chapter number 2. Now this is going to be take 1 because I've already did a previous preview of how long this chapter is. And we're going to do this in more than one take, okay? So this is going to be a quick 10-minute take of chapter 2, which is entitled Runaway. So without further ado, it reads, as such, and before I read as such, there is a picture here on the first page of chapter 2. And it reads like this. Slave had to be extremely strong, both inside and out, to endure the hardship, excuse me, and terrible treatment they faced every day. But Harriet's strength was legendary. You can't go back to hard labor in the fields two days after a major head injury and survive if you're a weakling. As a young woman, Harriet was still a tiny person. She stood only five feet tall. But her height and slight frame were misleading. Harriet was just as strong as most men. She could move heavy barrels filled with goods with the best of them. People marveling at her muscles got a kick out of watching her work. She plowed fields and drove oxen, chopped wood, and hauled logs. Her father took special pride in his daughter's remarkable ability. Ben, who had a lifetime of experience working in the forest, handed down his knowledge to his daughter. Something that would come in very handy, not too far in the future. When she was about 22, here on Palm Praise 2 on Chapter 2, and she was 22. Harriet fell in love and married John Tubman, a free black man, but marrying a free man did not mean Harriet became free too. Instead, she remained a slave who could be sold and separated from her husband at any time. In fact, when a slave wanted to get married, whether to another slave or to a free person, the slave had to ask permission from their master. If Harriet and John had children, the children also would be slaves. What a way to start a life together. There's some pictures before we turn the page. There's the wood, and then there's another picture. In 1849, Harriet's longtime master died. And his widow decided she would sell some of the plantation's slaves to pay off debts her husband had left. One of the slaves she wanted to put on the auction block was Harriet's niece, Kasaya, who was married with children. Harriet thought about her own future, who was headed to the auction next. Hmm. <laughs> she lived in fear of being separated from her family and her new husband. Every time I saw a white man, I was afraid of being carried away, she said. In Harriet's mind, there were only two options. Be taken away to an unknown place she didn't want to go, or run away to a place she did. She discussed her desires to flee north with John, although he could leave Maryland at any time he wanted because he was a free man. He told Harriet under no circumstances would he leave. And there's a little picture right there. They, they communicate and she's talking about leaving and he talking about under no circumstances. He didn't want to leave. He just wanted to stay there, y'all. So now 
over here is a little section that says free at last. I'm going to read that real quick before we turn the page. Now, free at last, this little section right here says, in 1830, about 53,000 black people living in Maryland, or one-third of all blacks living in Maryland, were free. Some bought their freedom, which was very expensive and hard to do. Others inherited their freedom after their masters died. Some free black people were descendants of Africans who came to America on their own as explorers, traders, or sellers. Now we certainly gonna go ahead and turn the page. And uh, before I start reading, um, this is the page right here. Um, she did her best to talk him into it, but he wouldn't budge. Maybe John was afraid of getting caught with Harriet, a fugitive, and being beaten or thrown in jail. Running away was the most dangerous thing a slave could do. And it was equally risky for anyone who helped that slave. She loved her husband, but could be ripped away from him at any moment. If she were sold, it would certainly be to a plantation deeper in the south where the weather was hotter, the work harder, and the chance of ever making it north impossibly small. So Harriet mm, made a decision that must have been very painful. She made a plan for her escape and kept it a secret from her husband. In the middle of the night on September 17, 1849, Harriet and her brothers, Ben and Henry, Henry excuse me, snuck out of their cabins and headed into the darkness of a completely unknown future. They stepped out in faith, y'all. Okay, unfortunately, it wasn't one that included freedom. At least, not on this trip. Not long into their escape, Harriet and her brother started uh, fighting about directions. They couldn't take roads up north, so they had to stick to forests, swamps, and fields at night when the chance of being seen was slim. Getting lost was easy and incredibly dangerous. Ben and Henry decided they didn't want to go on. Harriet was furious. How could they go back when they knew that the worst beating of their lives awaited them? Hmm. As soon as their owner figured out they were missing, she posted a notice with the reward of $100, even if they were captured out of state, and $50 in state. When they walked back onto the plantation, she surely killed them. In the end, though, uh, the brothers won, and despite Harriet's angry protests, they all turned back. Harriet, however, was not one to give up. And it wasn't long before she ran away again. This time, she didn't take any chances. Harriet set off for freedom, alone. Didn't have nobody to argue with, nobody to have no disputes with about where to go, how to get there. Uh, turning back, she did it all by herself, did it alone. Hmm. Just learn a little something from the book while we're reading it, y'all. But anyway, the dark woods and all their strange noises. A little strange when you go out there by yourself. Strange noises weren't going to keep her from liberty. Here's a picture. She I got a picture kind of like looking up at the stars with the trees all in the background. And here is the next picture right there. And we almost to our 10-minute break for this first take. 
So let me just read a little bit more and we'll be done, y'all. She looked up to the North Star, the brightest in the sky, which would be her guide to Pennsylvania, and started out on the Underground Railroad. And I'm going to end this take right there. So stay tuned for take number two of chapter two here on Palm Praise 2. But until then, I certainly want for you to be well, take care, be blessed, and it be at thy will. I'll talk with you soon here on Palm Praise 2. So until next time. Later, y'all.